How's it guys, this is Davey FP and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'll be taking you guys through my very own team selection for the upcoming game week 5. So now the international break has concluded, hope you guys had a great international break, I know for myself it was pretty decent, so if it was for you guys too. But now FPL has returned, let's get straight back into the FPL content, and that's exactly what we'll be doing in this video. So to start off the video, I'll quickly be taking you guys through my game week 4 team review, I did this in the video yesterday, the transfer plan video, so I'll be going over it quite quickly, then I'll be turning our attention to the upcoming game week 5. So I'll be going through my transfer plan first before the actual team selection and show you guys what moves I could potentially do. So if that's something that you guys are interested in, sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. So let's go over a quick review of how game week 4 actually went. Unfortunately, it was going to be a red arrow in the international break, and we have dropped in rank to 255k. But even though it was a red arrow, I definitely will take the start to the season any day of the week. A great start to the FPL season, and let's hope we don't get too many reds. Now that red arrow was due to the fact that it was a pretty average game week for ourselves, 73 points, basically bang on the average, with a game week rank of 5 million. Now the big thing about game week of 5 is not only the fact that we only have one free transfer, I've seen lots of you guys actually have two free transfers, but I only unfortunately have one. But at least you do have about 2.1 million left in the bank, so quite a big upgrade can be made, and I'll show you guys later if I decide to actually use that. But comment down below, how was your game week? Did you guys go into the international break with a red or a green arrow? And where are you guys sitting in the overall ranks? But now let's go over the actual team review. As mentioned, went over this in quite a lot of depth in yesterday's video, the transfer plan. So I'll be going over it a lot quicker in this video. So the bench actually had a pretty decent performance this week. Turner against Chelsea got 5 points. We have Archer on 12 points. And Baldock and Saliba ended up blanking. Now Turner's 5 points is actually pretty decent for a goalkeeper, mainly because game week 4, every single goalkeeper basically blanked. Myself with Johnston ended on 1 point, Pickford owners got 1 point, so those Turner 5 points actually look pretty decent. Not as decent though as the Archer 12 point appearance, the new signing for Sheffield United got off on the mark, getting those assists and also those goals. So I would have really loved game week 4 if I got those jammy 12 points off the bench, but unfortunately that wasn't the case, but I wasn't going to play Archer anyways. Now, I've already spoken about a kind of Johnston one-point appearance, but I won't lie, on Sunday I was really hoping for some big points because of Pickford's blank on Saturday. But the 3-2 win over Wolves wasn't exactly the best defensive performance, and we're going to see if Johnston actually will remain between the sticks. Moving on to the rest of our defense, we have Ben Shaw with one point. Now, before the game week, if you guys told me that Ben Shaw will only get one point against Nottingham Forest, I would have probably told you that you're quite crazy. But I guess they are attacking pretty decently at the moment, just expected more out of Chelsea and Ben Shaw as a whole. So that one point kind of stings. Not as much though as the stupid on two points because if you guys watched that game, Newcastle got a goal in the 92nd minute, wiping out that stupid on a clean sheet. So honestly just hope that Deserbe subbed a stupid on off before they conceded that wasn't the case though. And I was super sad because it was quite a risk playing Brighton with their bad defense against a pretty strong Newcastle side. But no attacking returns, no kind of defensive returns, so only the two point appearance. Then luckily though, one of the transfers in was going to be a dogie this week. I brought him in for Bayer, another 4.0 defender. He got an assist in that game. Both fullbacks from Spurs actually got assists. But the big news was that Spurs actually lost their clean sheet pretty early on. So opening couple minutes, I was a pretty doubtful of any points from a dogie. I was regretting the move, but luckily he has that attacking threat. And that's exactly what we relied on for those points. But overall, as you guys can see, the defense for game week 4 definitely was kind of a week to forget for the defenders. Let's see if the midfield actually improved. So in terms of our midfield apartment, we had some good performers. Rashford with 7 points, Mbuma with 8 points, scored in the 93rd minute in that Brentford draw. And then Saka also got an assist against United. Now I was a little bit disappointed with Saka because Odegaard and Martelly did outperform him. In terms of the 3 goals that Arsenal scored, was only involved in one of them. But I guess he is quite consistent. Sterling and Bruno also ended up blanking. Sterling one of the chances in this week. The 50-50 between Sterling and Madison, currently in Madison's favour, after he picked up a goal in that Spurs win. Then in terms of Bruno, it seems like the kind of a thing this season, he's going to underperform his stats terribly. I mean, the amount of XG, XA that Bruno is getting in these fixtures is simply criminal. He has to get more attacking returns. At least Rashford did end up scoring though in that game against Arsenal. It was a pretty tough one to call. Was Arsenal going to win? Was United going to win? All I hoped for was a lot of goals. That's kind of what we got. But as mentioned, Saka underperforming Odegaard and Martelly was a little bit disappointing. And I would have loved some Bruno points. But finally, the last apartment, the forwards, where basically all the points came from the Norwegian Erling Haaland scoring a Hattie in game week 4, 20 points doubled to 40. But everyone kind of perma captain Haaland at the moment, Defi was the week to go for was a very easy fixture, so this haul was on the cards always. 
If you guys didn't captain only Holland, comment it down below. I want to see who you guys actually went for. I saw some Chihuahua owners, which would have been pretty bad. That's a massive difference between the two. But finally, kind of talking about Chelsea, we're going to go over Jackson. Got only one point, yet again, arguing with the referee. He's actually getting close to suspension for those yellow cards. And once again, he got a lot of XG, but didn't score. So the biggest thing about this Chelsea game was the fact that just Sterling assisted a chance that was a big chance for Nicholas Jackson. Very easy one to score, but he missed it. And if that did end up going in, we would have been in the points for game week four. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Has been pretty bad, so we brought him in. I really just hope that he converts some of these chances in the future. But as you guys can see, 73 points, pretty mediocre week. Red arrow to 255k. How did your game week go, and were you guys in the overall ranks? But now let's head on to game week five, and what chances will I be making? Well, with one free transfer and 2.1 million left in the bank, I'm actually looking to bank a transfer for game week five. Now this might be the blessing or the curse of only having one free transfer. As mentioned, all of you guys do have two free transfers and might be actually forced into a move that backfires. But that move could actually pay off the aggressive moves. A Madison, a Son in this week, a Trippier in even could be great moves, even if you guys are future-proofing your team. But in terms of my own squad, I can't really see a route that I really like in terms of my one free transfer and having two for game week six does look quite likely. Now, if you guys don't know, between game week five and game week six, a reminder here that the European competitions are going to be starting for this season. So your Champions League, your Europa League, and your Conference League will be kicking off. So all of us do own these assets in these European kind of teams. So this midweek will be integral for team selections as well as injury news. So that's why I'm perfectly fine to actually go into this next week with a bank transfer and then see how the European competitions actually play out. Now, another big reminder is that all the press conferences will be coming up after international break after I release this video. So we could have a lot of managerial news coming in. So while at the current moment I'm looking to actually bank a transfer, let's just say one of my players is injured, returned from international break, injured or something like that, I might be actually forced into that move. But don't worry, I'll keep you guys updated on my Discord server as well as my Twitter page if we don't do a deadline stream tomorrow. But just because I might not be doing a move doesn't mean that you guys aren't. Comment down below what your moves are and if you guys have any transfer dilemmas and I'll try and help out with them. But now let's go on to our actual starting 11 for the game week 5, our team selection as a whole. As always, let's start off with our bench. Now the bench this week has a little bit of a dilemma and that's going to be the man himself, Estupanan, has united away a tough game on paper that you would say, but with the defensive form being quite bad, Estupanan might have a few attacking returns in this one. Now the reason I'm actually benching Estupanan is because I do own Rashid and Bruno at the current moment. I really want United to score, therefore Estupanan loses the clean sheet. So I'm almost playing my odds here and hoping that United do well. But if your Stupidon has a very high ceiling, if he does get an attacking return, maybe an assist, could get bonus points. So I'll discuss that when I talk about my defense. Other than that though, we've got Archer, Baldock against Spurs, not going to play them at the end of the day. Then have Johnston against Aston Villa away, a tough game on paper, and I prefer Turner against Burnley at home. So yes, Turner will be between the sticks, but as you guys would have seen over on kind of Twitter this week, it seems like Turner is going to be the second choice goalkeeper. I just have my fingers crossed that he plays game week five, as Johnston might also lose his place to Dean Henderson. So yes, I might actually have lost my place for both goalkeepers. Turner might be benched. Johnson might be benched. Just hope that it's not going to be in game week five. But what's in front of us is a better fixture for Turner. So he's in my team. And Forrest actually have a pretty good XG conceded. Then our back line is going to be Ben Shaw starting off against Bournemouth away. I actually expect Bournemouth to score in this one. But Ben Shaw is quite attacking. So let's hope for one or two attacking returns. Same could be said about Adogi, but I do think he has the clean sheet here. Sheffield United comes up against Archer. Will he score another goal? That'll honestly ruin my day as an Adogi owner. But still, great fixture on paper here. Same for Ben Chowell. And the last player, Saliba, also has a nice one. So the debate this week is between Saliba or Stupanan. Everton away, United away. It seems kind of sensible on paper to play Everton away. But in my opinion, Saliba has the higher floor, but Stupanan has the higher ceiling. So could Stupanan potentially outperform Saliba? Definitely. But at the current moment, I'm favoring the clean sheet odds against Everton away. But comment down below, this seems like it's the main dilemma for the bench this week. Are you guys playing an Arsenal defender or are you playing a stupid un? And what's your reason behind that? But let's go on to our midfoot apartment. We've got Mbumo against Newcastle away. Tough game on paper, but at his price point, don't mind if he blanks every odd game week. And against Newcastle looking for revenge after loss against Brighton, this might be the one that he blanks in. But let's just see what happens. Brentford are attacking pretty well. No expectations on Mbumo. Just hope he outperforms the other 6.5s. Then let's round off our kind of midfield apartment or the middle of the midfield. It's going to be Sterling and also Saka. So Saka, like Saliba, is Everton away. Great game on paper. Don't think you Pickford owners will be getting a clean sheet. And hopefully Saka gets a few attacking returns. Same could be said about Sterling against Bournemouth away. It's a good fixture on paper. I feel for Chelsea. And he has had the international break off where I hope that he's been training. 
So for Saka and Sterling, high hopes for this game week. Hopefully they do repay our patience with hopefully two massive hauls. Then the final double up is going to be Rashford also Bruno, Brighton at home. Tougher game on paper that you would probably say, but Brighton haven't been defending that well at the moment. So this is why I'm benching a Stupanon at the moment. Just feel like I want Rashford and Bruno to do pretty well. And United's attack has actually been pretty decent in terms of the stats. So I do think that Rashford and Bruno will be kind of differentials after everyone's moving them to Madison and also Human Son. So fingers crossed they do pretty well. In the final department, our forwards, the Puma captain Erling Haaland, not much to talk about with him. West Ham away, tougher game on paper, but good enough to captain him. And he also scored over the international break. Nicholas Jackson though, like Sterling, hope that he repays the patience. Bournemouth away is a great game on paper. So let's hope that Chelsea rebound from game week four. So as a whole, you guys can probably understand why I'm banking a transfer for game week five. The starting 11 looks pretty decent, but as mentioned with the manager news coming up shortly, we might be forced into a switch. Other than that though, are you guys starting your Arsenal defender or are you starting a Stupanun? Interested to see what you guys' thoughts are. Otherwise, as mentioned, if you guys have any transfer dilemmas, comment them down below. If you have two free transfers, I feel a little bit sorry for you as there's so many options for game week five. So I'll try to reply to every comment. So if you guys have any questions, also you can ask me on my Discord server or my Twitter page. You guys can find those links in the description down below. But this is basically a wrap of the video, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like if you did and subscribe if you have subscribed yet. But I'm going to sign off. It's been Davey FPL and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.